Hello, friends. Robert Pevin here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Silent Image. <laughs> that's that's not <laughs> Silent Image. That's the opposite. It's an image that is silent. I'm a mime. What can I tell you? There's no um, image. That, we are images on their computer screens, Bob. Right. So this is a first level illusion spell. It takes an action to cast. So this is a cast range. Verbal somatic material components. A bit of fleece, like the fleece that you're pulling over their eyes. Concentration for 10 minutes. Bard, sorcerer, wizard spell. This is three of the arcane casters. You create the image of an object, a creature, or some other visible phenomenon that is no larger than a 15-foot cube. The image appears at a spot within range and lasts the duration. The image is purely visual. It isn't accompanied by sound, smell, or other sensory effects. You can use your action to cause the image to move to any spot within range. As the image changes locations, you can alter its appearance so that its movement appears natural for the image. For example, if it, you create an image of a creature and move it, you can alter the image that appears to be walking. Physical interaction with the image revealed to be illusion because things can pass through it. A creature that uses action to examine it can uh, determine that it's an illusion with a successful investigation check against your spell save DC. If it discerns a creature, if a creature discerns it as an illusion, the creature can see through it. So it becomes translucent. Whoa. This is silent image. I'm a big proponent of silent image, but really only through Misty Visions. The rest of the time, I don't think it's quite worth a first level spell slot. This is like a... A half level spell. It's not quite a cantrip, but it's not quite a first level spell. I think, but I like it a lot. Well, I don't. I don't mean. I don't know. I, I haven't ever had a lot of luck using illusion spells, but it, I mean, if you like it and it does cool things, and uh, what 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 keeps it from being worth a first level slot? Um, I think that so in the early tiers, you're gonna really often find yourself wanting. You're gonna have, find yourself wanting. First level spells that do damage, first level spells that have big impact on the environment in a moment. So like Disguise Self, I think, for example, compares to this in that it lasts a long duration, it's an illusory effect, but it persists for a long period of time and will often feel like a very big impactful player. Silent Image is more of a small window to do some specific Thing. It's not really a long con. Detecting that silent image is an illusion will happen very quickly unless you're like hiding behind a created barrel, right? Which is often a use case for silent images. You build a 15 foot object around you that looks like it belongs in the area and then creatures pass right by it, not suspecting there'd be anything out of place. The use cases for that, I love illusions because they can do anything, but they're tricky to get to get exactly what you want. They're not always given to do what you're hoping will have occur. By putting something into existence that can't really move that convincingly, that can't really like make sounds or interact with things, you are pretty heavily gated by its by its ability to interface with the world. How you can set up Oh, excuse me. Cons with this thing is a little bit tr it's it's fickle. It doesn't have the interfacing with other things that I want it to. And for that reason, I find that on low tier characters and characters level one through three, I would normally fall back to other first level spells before silent image, but in the upper tiers, want silent image on the sheet so I can spend my lower level spells while doing these small instantaneous attempts at cool illusion stuff. All right. There's, you know, hiding in apparel or, you know, some other phenomena that, uh, you know, looks natural. Um, there's that. There's, a, uh, I guess, if you don't have time to cover a pit trap with normal means, this would do like it. a section of floor. That's cool. Um, yep. Pulver escapes. If you uh, just make Absolutely. a door look like a blank section of wall and go through it before the, your pursuers or, get there. Wily Coyote style, make yeah. a blank section of wall look like a door. <laughs> or a doorway. Yeah, doorway, even better. Yes. So that is where we get into a little bit of uh, trickiness. This doesn't create vacant space if that makes sense you'd have to make it look like a tarp opening for example because it can't cr it creates an image of an object creature or phenomenon it well, no, doesn't have to do the wily e. coyote thing where you paint like whatever <laughs> they would see through the doorway <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't work it doesn't paint things this isn't a this is an artistic rendition this is a a hologram. This is a projection of something. If it isn't right. something... A, a section of wall with this image on it. <laughs> that is what, what we're I'm getting creating. definitely into technicalities. So in that instance, right, 
I would say as the DM, moving left or right very quickly makes that illusion even more transparent that there yeah. is not anything behind it, right? Because you wouldn't see the perspective change. So that's something to consider, where normally illusions are great because this perspective does change with them because they are three-dimensional. That's often a big selling point to illusion magic. But, you know, that for the Wily Coyote fun stuff, you can definitely, you can find workarounds to make things run into walls and look like idiots. Or even better, uh, 15 feet is pretty big. Create a fake Jeez. balcony. Yep. They just they wander right off their outside. Ah! As long as they're not suspecting it. A really big element of this spell is yeah. they have to not be suspecting that something is an illusion for this to work. And this also, I we mentioned this before on some of our other our other videos talking about illusions. This spell's power will vary depending on your DM's decisions when it comes to what investigates for illusions. Are you in a world where everyone and their brother is running with minor illusion and illusions are left and right and charlatans use illusions constantly so everyone takes what they're seeing with a grain of salt as possibly fake? And if so, they're going to be physically inspecting a lot of things for illusions. They're going to be making a lot of checks against your spell save DC to see if they can discern something that's delusion or not. Other world tables are going to say no one is ever checking anything to see if it's an illusion or not, even if they live in their house. And they're like, I guess this balcony has just always been here and they'll <laughs> fall directly into it anyway. Right. It will vary DM to DM. Normally it's somewhere in the middle, but oftentimes you are going to be running into cases where this spell gets substantially worse because your DM makes lots of checks to discern things for illusions. Or you cast fly on yourself. Mm -hmm. And you step out on the balcony. Or, or, yeah, I was going to say an extension of a cliff face, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, come, come and get me. Someone else had to cast a silent image because it does have concentration, which is another point away oh, from crap. it. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, right, we can get into silly uses of this. And that's where I feel we should do. That's 100% what illusion magic is for. Yeah. Um, however, how does this compare to the cantrip? Uh, what is it? Minor, minor illusion. illusion. Yeah. So minor illusion is a image of an object specifically. So it doesn't do phenomenon, nor does it do uh, creatures. creatures. Yeah. It has to be an object for minor illusion. Minor illusion also is a five foot area as opposed to a 15 foot area. So it's a third the size, which is a pretty big difference. You can do a, you can't do balconies with minor illusion, at least easily. There aren't a lot of five foot wide balconies. Right. You can make sounds with minor illusion, which is a big upside that silent images never can do, right? They took ghost sound and minor illusion and sort of just smashed them together. I think those spells could have honestly been separated and still be both pretty powerful and good enough, but they mushed them together and I'm not complaining. It's, it's great. They both have the same, they can investigate it as a effect. Minor illusion isn't concentration, which is really big. Like that's just something you can throw out willy nilly while also doing the fly thing while also doing any other number of constant or concentration effects, which is pretty solid. So like there are a lot of really big upsides of a minor illusion to silent image and we're comparing them as if they're the same level and they're not. This costs you more. It yeah. does do a bigger impactful thing. You can do technically more illusory stuff with it, but it has a lot more restraints put on it. And I think that makes it a bit worse. Again, with Misty Visions that Warlocks get, they can cast this at will, and I find it's way better there because it will feel like an upgraded version of the illusion point of Minor Illusion, as long as you're not concentrating on something, right? The moment you put a hex up, it gets a lot worse, so you want to make sure, like, you're you're considering what your build is whenever you pick Misty Visions. But in the instance where your concentration is something that you don't mind, like, you, you want something for a combat concentration or two combat concentrations, and then you have Misty Visions for outside of combats, that, I think, is where it can find a lot of utility as an upgrade over Minor Illusion. When you have to spend spell slots on it, especially if you only have three or four, it is a little bit, a little bit more like, well, I could just do most of this with Minor Illusion, and I think that could be good enough, you know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But, uh, yeah, I guess... I don't know. Creatures feels like a big upgrade, though. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Moving Being creatures. Being able to put a minotaur facing the other direction, you know, uh, you want to make sure that it, they have as little room to interact with it as possible, just to like sort of create situations where your enemies can consider there to be an extra threat somewhere nearby that can be useful, right? Having even just again the six seconds of passerby saw a minotaur walk past the window can lead to specific end results where maybe your Minotaur companion stole something, is hiding under a desk, and if they see a copy of that Minotaur run outside past the window, they'll chase after that instead of your your buddy. And that's yeah. like a pretty cool use case that minor or that silent image can have. That minor illusion can't, but there are also, you know, other spells that will do will do a good enough job hiding your buddy that you don't necessarily need silent image for this. Or setting up an alibi. Yeah. Your Minotaur friend killed a guy. 
but I have we saw him across town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was very stoic and quiet, but he was with <laughs> us. Ah. Uh, you got any other uses? I guess there's a it's bait. A, yeah. So there there are myriad opportunities for illusions to be good. If you can ever think of a if an object or creature or phenomenon, phenomenon being like a firework, an explosion, a uh, even something like another a mimicking another magical effect, like a magic missile flying by a window or something. All if you can find a use in your mind that could take those to be practical, that could take those to change an environment or situation to your benefit by having people believe it happened. Minor or silent image will do that. And for that reason, I think it's like all illusion magic, really hard to say is bad. It is definitely going to vary based off of your creativity and your DM's willingness for BS. If your DM is like um, closer to no nonsense and they have more discerning NPCs that see through the BS plans a little bit easier than some other DMs, you might find that it's hard to get mileage out of. But at some tables, it will feel like it breaks the game in half. At some tables, it'll feel like you can get NPCs to do whatever you want by putting the right creature, right object in the right place at the right time. All right. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Do you uh, got a rating for this one? I like. I would want. I want to rate illusion and spells higher, but because minor illusion is so good and is a cantrip, I think this is just a three. I think in the upper tiers, it's a lot better than the lower tiers, and I don't want to put this on a lot of low tier characters. But I do like having it as a sixth, seventh, eighth level character. I think is fifteen foot area gives me a lot of flexibility, and if I don't feel bad about the cost, I'm way more willing to cast this. That's funny because I was gonna say. I know I'll always struggle to use this, but I'll be generous and give it a three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a, uh, what was this? My, no, no, this wasn't my religion. The silent image. This was silent image. Thank you, Sam. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'm sure you've had, I'm sure you have a lot of silent image stories. We would love to hear them in the comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you've done. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.